So here we are doing an extraction today from a flow hive. You'll very shortly see a video of how the flow hive works, but to access it, this top bit gives you access into the key slots. So the key will slide in there to activate the frames. And down here, that's where we're getting the honey from. Now I've labelled my frames for traceability purposes. So today we're harvesting off frame one, and then we're harvesting off frame four. If we move around to the side of the hive, we have observation windows. And so we can see the bees in action. And we'll use that later on as we're harvesting so you can see what's happening to the cappings as we're, as we're harvesting. This is a flow frame. It's made up of approximately 80 individual segmented pieces. And when it's pulled apart, they look something like this. They slap together quite easily. And they're held in place by the wires on top of the frame. When it's in position, it looks like that. The bees will get in there. And they'll notice, even though there's, most of a cell is done, there's gaps top and bottom. So the bees get in there and they fill those gaps top and bottom with wax, creating a seal. That then creates a whole cell they can start filling. When it's time for harvest, you'll see there's a slot up here. We put a key in and we move that from back, move it upwards. I'll show you what it looks like on here. So when you move that upwards, you can see those frames that cell change. That then creates a drain and the honey is down able to run into this bottom tube which is where it extracts and comes out into our jars. How that looks in a big hive. So up the top there, this is where we put the key. So we put it in the bottom slot and twist it and that moves the frames. And our tube goes in the bottom. The honey runs down the side, under the cappings, into that bottom chamber, and out into our tube. This is one of the frames we're harvesting tomorrow. Just getting into the hive today, just to make sure that it is 100% capped and ready to go. Okay, so now that you've seen how the frames of the flow hive work, we'll extract from a couple of frames. Some people remove the whole super from the hive and extract it either in the kitchen or a honey house. I prefer to leave the super in place on the hive and just extract a frame or two at the time as they're capped and ready. Um, I've moved one of the frames, number one, to the outside so that we can look in the observation window and so you can watch the process as we're doing it. Now, in a conventional extraction, you put the honey into a honey heater or a hot house. Because this is staying on the hives, there's no need to heat the honey as the bees keep the hive at around about 35 degrees. This makes the honey coming out of the frames nice and runny and really easy to extract. Now, as I'm not doing a conventional extraction using the centrifuge, etc., there's minimal equipment needed. All I need is a stand to hold the jars in place. I use a spare hive box for that. And because these are short jars, I'm using a chunk of 4 by 2 um, I need a key to open the hive. That's this here. I also need the runoff tubes so the hive can flow from the hive into the jar. Um, they come as a straight tube but I've modified mine with a bit of food grade silicon so that it um, filters into the jar easier. Then we need some filters. I use um, paint strainers from Mitre 10. They're pretty much just like pantyhose. Um, these have been sterilized before I've used them. Lastly, I need jars. Now, before starting to extract my jars, runoff tubes and strainers are all sanitized. Um, now, I've got two different size jars here. I've got a 400 ml jam jar and I've got a half gallon ball mason jar. I prefer to extract in the big jars, although I will extract into these for today's purposes. 
Now I don't need to uncap the frames, in fact the cappings stay on the surface of the frame and they prevent the honey from running down the outside of the frame. They may get a bit distorted during extraction, some may even tear, but they don't get removed. Because I'm not uncapping the frames, I don't need an uncapping knife or a capping scratcher. I also don't get any wax that has to be processed. Now the bees can also work undisturbed while I'm extracting. If you come down here, you can see they're actually in those frames already working and they can walk up and down the sides. I, extract, I will ex extracted that one and you can see they're already tearing it apart and fixing it. There are a couple of reasons why I prefer to extract into the big jar and then decant into the small one. I don't have my NP1, so I'm not a, I can't legally sell my honey. I do give some away to family and friends, but I don't and can't sell it. The majority of my honey gets made into mead, so using the larger jar is much easier to work with. However, for the purposes of the video, I'll extract one frame into a large jar and one frame into the small jars as if I was selling it. So we'll get started. So we pull the cap out of the top. Plug is a little bit honeyed up. Gently plug, pop that out. And then we put the tube in. Now we only do a little bit at a time. So we just slide it in the bottom slot as demonstrated. Crack the first little bit. That honey is already starting to drip. You can actually see it draining out of the front there and into the jar. So this here is my preferred method of extraction. I prefer to use the larger jar and then do the decanting inside. A couple of reasons for that. One is that I can just set it, crack the frames as I need to and then go inside and let it just drip out. And it will fill this whole jar pretty much right to the top. Once again I've got the filters on and these lids here are called recap lids made in the USA to fit the ball mason jars. Benefit of these is obviously key. obviously the tube fits in there really well but there's also a slight gap around it so that allows airflow through so that it doesn't create a vacuum or block up that tube but it also stops the bees getting in there so none of the bees or robbing wasps can access that honey and that just keeps it nice and clean and it's also a lot safer for us we're standing here behind the hive today I'm in jandals and a t-shirt I'm not wearing any bee equipment at all and none of the bees are even interested so when the extraction's done to reset the hive and also for cleanup all we do is we put the key in the top slot twist it that resets that part the bung back in and then we remove the tube now there is a bee there because we did get spilled a tiny tiny bit so all we do is just pull the tube out put the cap in and that's us done so I've done the full extraction now and this is what the cappings or the outside surface of the frame looks like they are starting to tear those cappings off and uh, start filling up those cells again, or at least start repairing those cells. If you look just in here, you can see where they're doing those cappings. You can also see some over here. Now because of the design of the hive, there's no damage done to the combs during extraction because they're all plastic. The wax seal between the cell walls that the bees make is actually designed to be sacrificial. Because of that, there's also maximum honey can be extracted. You can even leave it trickling out overnight if you want. I usually leave mine for about an hour to get the last dregs and any remaining drops go into the hives where the bees will clean it up. As there's no cappings, there's no wax to be collected from those cappings. There's no wax to be processed, except the wax and burr comb collected during the season from routine inspections. 
Now I did have some wax collected um, from the season. So to process that I built a solar wax melter out of polystyrene sheets. I filtered the wax twice and came out with a large clean block of wax with minimal dross at the bottom. Worked really efficiently and cost zero as I'd already had all the bits I needed lying around the house and the workshop. Now because these frames aren't taken off the hive, um, you don't have to put the wets back on the hive, they just stay in situ and as you can see the girls are just quietly cleaning everything up, they're chewing that wax and they're going to start refilling it as soon as they've sealed up those cracks again. Um, so that'll happen almost immediately. You can see how much, just how much they're doing already. Now once we get back inside with these big jars, I label it up so it's come from the Red Hive C box fourth frame and that's the date. I then take the strainer off and just put the cap straight back on so now because of this cap I can then pour that into any other container. What I have done this time though for this video is I have stretched the strainer out over a bread and butter plate just so that you can see exactly how little amount of debris is actually in that. You can just see some of those wax cappings that have dropped down when they've been building those wax seals and doesn't really look like there's any bee parts in there today but that's all of the debris out of one frame. Here we are back inside and now it's time to look at the labels. Now because I don't have an MP1 and I can't legally sell my honey, I'm not actually required to label anything. However, I have made my own labels to make it look attractive to gifts as family and I've made sure that these labels do conform to standards, just in case I get my MP1 at some stage down the track. So let's have a look at these. So the name, I've chosen Mountain Kitchen as my brand name sort of thing. The address is down here and across here we have a 500 gram weight. So a 400 ml jar is 500 grams. Here's our nutritional information. And over here we have the frame code, which is the equivalent of the batch. So Red Hive Box C Frame 1. Oops, just realised I've put the wrong date on it. I put yesterday's date. Oops. And I've got my registration number on it as well. So these are just a template for Avery labels. So this is a four, a four template. And here's how it looks on the jar. Looks pretty smart. As for extraction records, again, legally not selling the honey, legally not required to fill out these records. I do anyway for my own, um, just my own records. So I do keep basic records. So the date, the hive, what I was doing in the hive. So which hives or which frames I extracted. So frames one and four today. And I've got approximately 2.75 kilos off each frame. So what that looks like is... Now I would have put all of frame one into small jars. Except I've been doing a um, fair bit of preserving at the moment. And I've run out of jam jars. So I was only able to get um, the smaller jars. And then that big jar which as you can see is not all the way full. But that is today's extraction.